On today's show, Dylan McElrath adds the intimidation factor for the Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and oh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals Minute Cat available wherever you find your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about what the addition of Dylan McElrath means for this team. He is that rugged, tough blue liner defender that the Capitals are looking for, a prototypical tough guy that I think is going to be a perfect match for the Capitals. Um, you take a look at it, there's not a lot of tough guys left on the team. Uh, Tom Wilson would be the resident tough guy on the team, but I don't think he's best served playing that role. We need him scoring goals. We don't need him spending time in the penalty box. That is why Dylan McElrath is the perfect player uh, to crack open a can of McElrath when needed. A little bit later, we'll talk about with all the space in between the last preseason game and the first game of the regular season, the Capitals have got creative and held some practices at Capital One Arena. What's that all about? And then in the final segment, I'll talk about the salary cap questions that have been answered for the most part for the Capitals. But just to get it going here, talking about Dylan McElrath and uh, him joining this team. Well, he's going to be an extra skater along with Alex Alexiev uh, most of the time. But when the situation is right, you have a real great tough guy on the lineup that can answer the belt, that can drop the mitts, and, and is not afraid to take on anyone. And he has a long history of playing in the NHL and the AHL, and he's not afraid of taking on anyone. And you need people like that. You need players like that on your team. Uh, if you listen to a lot of, of the different uh, podcasts and shows talking about the modern NHL, that the tough guy is a thing of the past, I'm not really buying that. There is definitely a time and a place to have a tough guy. And the, the good thing about Dylan McElrath is that he understands his role. He understands that he's not going out there to be shoot, you know, scoring a bunch of goals, even though if that happens, that would be a good thing. But he's ultimately out there to be a good defender, a good blue liner, and to drop the mitts when called upon that they have a tough guy in house. And, you know, you think here somewhat recently, the Capitals have always had some good tough guys. I'm talking Wilson. I'm talking Hathaway, Lada to a certain extent, Erskine, uh, these kind of guys that uh, it is kind of the fabric of this team is to be a heavy team and has been for quite some time. I think that, you know, last season, the Capitals got away with that, uh, away from that a little bit uh, by not having someone like Hathaway in the lineup, that it was primarily just Tom Wilson being the tough guy out on the ice. And, you know, Alex Ovechkin, uh, he is like that, you know, don't make me get up kind of guy. Like, I'll fight, but you don't really want a piece of this. See Shvechnikov from uh, several years ago that uh, he will fight if called upon, but ultimately at this stage of uh, Alex Ovechkin's career, I don't think we want him fighting uh, unless it's really called for or if he really is getting irritated by someone. So it's good to have someone like Dylan McElrath on this team 
captain of the Hershey Bears, who are back-to-back Calder Cup winners, a leader, uh, a player that a lot of the Capitals players like, and, you know, played a big role towards the end of the season for the Capitals and their short stint in the postseason. Uh, But talking about McElrath, and he knows his role and where he fits in. And uh, one of the things that I've spoke about all summer is that I've loved his game. If you're an everyday of the show, you know I've spoke about that. My biggest question always was, Where is he going to fit? And as it does appear, he's going to be that extra skater, but I don't think he's hurting too bad. He is still making some sweet NHL money at the end of the day. Dylan McElrath's path to becoming a full-time member of the Capitals has spanned nearly nine years. The last time he received positive news at the end of the preseason was on October 7th, 2016, when the New York Rangers included him in their 23-man squad for their season opener. Fast forward eight years, and McElrath and his family anxiously awaited good news during the current training camp with hopeful text messages and uncertainty hanging in the air. And it was one of the things that uh, Spencer Carberry talked about that he likes guys like Dylan McElrath, that, you know, they've faced adversity. It hasn't been, you know, shooting straight to the top and having a, a regular role in the National Hockey League that he has faced some struggles. He's a guy that's played in the National Hockey League. He is a guy that has played in the American Hockey League, but he has not lost focus And just sticking to what he does best is ultimately why he is still in the league and why he got a promotion to the big team, the Capitals. After practicing at Capital One Arena on Monday, McElrath received the news from head coach Spencer Carberry that he would be starting in the NHL for the opening of the season. A big moment. He will most likely not crack the opening night roster, but they are going to recognize who is going to be on the active roster. Uh, So that is a special moment for him and his family that he spoke about, uh, that he gave his wife a hug, and it uh, had to be kind of tough on her um, and him as well. You know, you take a look at it, and I think it would be easy to, you know, kind of lose focus a little bit. That, you know, at one point in my career, I was an NHL player, and now I'm down in the American Hockey League, and I'm getting older. Is there ever going to be an opportunity for me in the NHL again. He never lost focus. And from what I've heard, he's never lost faith. And ultimately that is why he's here. That's why he said it's been a long time coming, put the work in uh, just a really great story about uh, tenacity and just sticking with things. uh, Even though it seems like it's maybe not a goal that can be attained for the 32 year old defenseman, the journey to this point has been quite eventful. His career has been marked by highs and lows, and he faced challenges in reaching the potential that was expected when he was selected at 10th overall by the New York team in 2011 in the NHL draft. And, um, you know, like, I don't know. I haven't followed his career since the very beginning. I don't think that he has changed his game probably a whole lot. Uh, but uh, being a tough guy um, and, you know, just being a solid defender and being a good leader are things that are going to endear you to an NHL team, to a coaching staff, and ultimately why the decision was made to have him on the active roster. Um, It was definitely a long shot. Make no mistake about it for him to be on the Capitals. So for him to be on the opening night roster, uh, even if it's from the press box, a huge moment uh, for Dylan McElrath. It's exciting to see that I'm still here. He remarked, I gave my wife and kids a big hug and had lots of FaceTime calls with my friends and family back home. Um, and a great moment, and I'm happy for him uh, that he was able to to live out his dream and is going to be able to live out his dream. And uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Irwin on this team, if you remember. He was a guy that they kind of put a, in the uh, cryogenic deep freeze. And, uh, you know, when, when called upon, they would thaw him out and he, it would be a flawless transition. And oftentimes with these depth players, it's not flawless. You're spending a lot of time just in pregame skates and uh, practice, but you're not getting a lot of real-time NHL activity. Uh, so for a guy like McElrath to understand his role um, and, you know, not to have a negative attitude, I think that a lot of the younger players, if they had to uh, live out this kind of role, they would probably be pouting and upset about it. 
at this point of Dylan's career, I think he understands where he's at. And at the end of the day, probably really happy that he has a job in the NHL. Throughout his career, McElrath has consistently demonstrated his tenacity and physical playing style. His efforts led him to D.C., where he has been a key player for the AHL's Hershey Bears. As the team, ca team captain, he has also helped secure consecutive Calder Cup titles over the past two seasons and has been a dependable option for head coach Spencer Carberry's team. Um, and, and that's what that's why he's here. And, you know, I think what spoke volumes uh, about what kind of player he is, is like I said, at the end of last season, when the Capitals were facing some injuries uh, that they called up Dylan. And I was going to go ahead and say that he played flawlessly and helped take the Capitals blue line to the next level. The leadership, dedication, and determination displayed by Mac has not gone unnoticed. According to Carberry, Mac has put in a lot of effort into his individual career and has overcome many challenges. Carberry also mentioned that it's heartwarming to see the group support and happiness for Mac, which brings a smile to everyone's face. Uh, so just a really great moment for him living out his dream. Recent training camp and selection during the most recent training camp, McElrath found himself in the right place at the right time with a coveted position available. The six foot five defenseman put in maximum effort to distinguish himself and secure it. It's a big, tough customer. I don't think there's a lot of guys in the league that are going to want to take on a big six foot five player. There are, because there are a lot of tough guys out there, but I think that McElrath will give those players all that they want and then some. Timing played a significant role, McElrath commented. Throughout the past eight years, I've been honing my skills consistently, vying for a spot on the team. There were ups and downs, and I persevered, maintaining faith in my ability to compete at this level. So his expectations and undering, understanding what those expectations are, the Caps expect McElrath to continue excelling at what he does best, being physical, unsettling opponents, and safeguarding his own zone at all costs. He is prepared to deliver this performance at the highest level. He said, I have a specific role in the team, and they want me to maintain my style of play. He knows who he is. That's why I earned my spot on the team, whether it's providing leadership or delivering a straightforward physical gameplay. These elements are crucial to my performance. He is eagerly anticipating not that evening, but also the remainder of what he expects to be a remarkable season in D.C. He said it's exhilarating, incredible, a special moment, McElrath remarked. These individuals uh, are extraordinary. There have been an overwhelming amount of support, even though all the call-ups over the years, I am genuinely happy and grateful for the support I received during this training camp, knowing that I had a real chance and did just that. Uh, so sometimes when things seem insurmountable, they seem like it's never going to happen. Hold on to your dreams. Uh, and that is definitely exemplified for Dylan McElrath, who has lived out his hockey dream. And I look forward to what he brings to the Capitals this coming season. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about line combinations and deep pairings at Capital One Arena. Yes, the Capitals have been having practice at Capital One Arena to get ready for the start of the regular season. I'll break it all down coming up. Game Time has a new feature called the Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff so you only see incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. So there's always, you know, your favorite band coming to town or your favorite sporting team, stand committee and those kind of things. And sometimes finding the right ticket is difficult. There's tickets available, but what is the view of the stage of where I'm sitting? All of those kind of things take all the guesswork out of it with game time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. 
All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and join the Locked On Capitals insiders. Uh, there is exclusive video, short form podcasts, all of those things. Just follow the link in the show description. All right, in this next segment here, we're going to talk about the Capitals at practice and uh, how they've had to get creative because there was a wide span of time uh, between the last game of the preseason and the first game Saturday night uh, that they didn't want to spend all of their time at MedStar, uh, that Spencer Carberry said that he felt like the Capitals were a little uncomfortable and not totally aware of all the, the, you know, the fine tunings of playing at Capital One Arena. So he is trying to overcome all of that by holding some practices at Cap One so they're available of the sight lines and how the boards respond, the ice, all of those sort of things so that the Capitals can be advantageous over their opponent, being that it is the home ice. And we're getting kind of a sneak peek at what the lineup is going to look like. Not too many surprises in the first game of the season. But talking about that practice location change, over the past two days, the Caps have opted to hold their practices at Cap One Arena, deviating from their usual routine. Head coach Spencer Carberry found this to be a unique way to spend time and foster team unity with a week remaining between the season opener. Additionally, this de decision provides the team with a chance to readjust to playing on their home ice. And uh, that is one of the things that he said in the interview, like I spoke of, is just getting used to the subtleties of playing on your home rink. Uh, usually they play at MedStar Ice Complex during practice, but they're trying to hone and fine-tune their game. Adapting to home ice last year, Coach Carberry mentioned that it took the team a few games to feel comfortable playing on home ice at the beginning of the season. He emphasized the importance of quickly adapting to the team home ice environment and its unique characteristics compared to their daily practice rink. According to Carberry, becoming acclimated to the these differences early on would be beneficial for the team and a little bit of a change of pace. You know, this team is kind of stewing, waiting, chomping at the bit, uh, waiting to get going on the regular season. Is this team going to be as advertised? Are they going to exceed expectations, even though Elliot Freeman and a lot of the locked on hosts have panned the Capitals as being a team not making it to the playoffs? I want to see it. Uh, how is this team going to perform uh, under the lights of the big stage? Talking about training regimen, Washington's 23-man roster uh, opening night uh, underwent an intensive training regimen focusing on various, various aspects, including five-on-five -five play, power play strategies, three-on-three -three situations, overtime tactics, and shootout scenarios. The training sessions also included high-energy drills and extensive skating exercises. Uh, one of the shootout things, we know that we're missing the big guy, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, who towards the end of his career with the Capitals did not have a whole lot of tools left in his tool set, but he was the maestro of the shootout, coming in really slow and oftentimes the beating uh, the opposing team's netminder. I guess they need to have that guy to step up this season, whoever that might be. Talking about lineup decisions, Carberry has maintained consistency in his lines with Jakob Vrana and Sonny Milano rotating as the third line left wing options. And it was a spirited affair. I think that Sonny Milano understands what's at stake here. Uh, he understands that Jacob Verona got a deal uh, to make it competitive at that third line left wing that, uh, you know, Sonny Milano has shown glimpses of greatness, a guy that came to this team ultimately to join the Hershey Bears, but kind of popped off the page and played so well that he joined the Capitals. And with his time with the Capitals thus far, there's been some highs, there's been some lows, but we want that to be a bit more even keel in the right direction. So it's good to have that flexibility to have a guy like Jacob Verona breathing down your neck here a little bit saying, hey, how's your plane going, huh? Pretty good. If not, I'm going to take your job. <laughs> Both players are vying for a spot in the lineup for Saturday night's game against the New Jersey Devils. So we don't know for sure as I record this on Tuesday evening. It's real early. I know what I saw at practice today, but ultimately who is going to be in the lineup. Player absences. Logan Thompson has been absent 
from the last two practices due to personal and family reasons. The team anticipates receiving an update on his expected return on Thursday. That's all I know. I don't have any other insider information on that. Uh, is it's as of a personal nature, and uh, ultimately we hope that we hear the word that he's good to go and able to join the Capitals sooner than later. But what did it look like at practice? Well, not too many surprises, I guess I'm going to say. The first line featured Alex Ovechkin, Dylan Strom, and Andrew Mangiapane. Second line, Connor McMichael, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Tom Wilson. Third line is where the battles took place. Jacob Vron and Sonny Milano on the left wing. Hendrix Slop here at center and Alexei Protus right wing. And then we take a look on the fourth uh, fourth line. It was Brandon Duhame, Nick Dowd, and Taylor Radish. So not too many surprises. The third line is going to be the one to circle in your mind to see who is ultimately going to get a majority of the starts at that third line left wing. Kind of up in the air right now. I guess, you know, there's the Capitals are pretty high on Jacob Verona, Sonny Milano, you better bring it. Talking about the D pairings, the first pairing, Jacob Chikrin and John Carlson. Second, Martin Faravari and Matt Roy. Third, Rasmus Sandin and TVR. The extras were Alexiev and Dylan McElrath. So a lot of big questions about the Capitals, about ultimately who's going to be in there. I think a lot of it is known, but, you know, hey, again, it's early. Uh, who is going to get the start net? Uh, I guess a lot of that's going to be determined if Logan Thompson is full go. Uh, but I tend to think that the Capitals will lean on Charlie Lindgren at least to start the season, but my hunch is they will split that workload a little bit more. And then just to keep an eye, in what situations are Alex Alexiev and Dylan McElrath, are they going to be inserted uh, into the lineup? A lot of storylines to follow. And of course, I'll have you guys covered on Locked On Capitals the entire way. All right, so coming up here after the break, we'll talk about the recent edition of Jacob Frana and Nick Backstrom on LTIR. TJ Oshie on LTI. What is the situation of the capital salary cap? I'll discuss coming up. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And listen, oftentimes there is a lot of football being played on any given Sunday or Monday or Thursday, and some of those games you're into and some of them you're not. Maybe you're really into the Commanders game or the Ravens game, but the other games... I don't care so much. If you want vested interest, open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on those games. All of a sudden, those games got that much more exciting. So you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team every day talking about the salary cap and uh, how it's difficult. You know, you have these paper transactions where players are sent down to the AHL, but they never really went there. It's just all on paper. And how are the Capitals and the other teams in the NHL, how do they get cap compliant? I am definitely not a math guy. That is not my strong suit. Uh, so I... Uh, fall back on Puckpedia, these kind of web pages uh, to give me all the insight, the skinny on what's going down as far as the salary cap situation is concerned. But talking about these offseason moves, there were a lot of them. So, you know, that definitely uh, had a lot of questions about how will the Capitals be cap compliant? The Capitals acquired Pierre Luc Dubois, Logan Thompson, Jacob Chikrin, Andrew Mangiapane, Brandon Duhame, and Taylor Radish. Additionally, they signed Jacob Verona to a one-year deal worth $775,000. What kind of, you know, cap uh, uh, gymnastics did they have to do to get compliant? It uh, it does definitely does take a guy that uh, with a sharp pencil and the ability to probably use AI and an adding machine, those kind of things. But it is difficult talking about. 
the salary cap strategy, despite being projected to be $9.03 million over the cap, the Capitals made strategic moves. Nicholas Backstrom and T.J. Oshie's contract valued at $9.2 million and $5.75 million per year, respectively, are now on LTIR, long-term injured reserve, as indicated on the Capitals' opening night roster. They are expected to remain on LTIR for the year. Uh, so this definitely uh, probably spells the end of T.J. Oshie's career. And, of course, Nick Backstrom, that doesn't come as much of a surprise. This move frees up their combined 14.95 million cap hit, giving the Capitals enough cap space. But it gets interesting as I was checking uh, with these various cap sites, and uh, they, had, they still had to make some big moves to become cap compliant. The cap sent Henrik's lop here down prior to submitting their opening roster. It is 9.03 million over the cap with 21, 11 forwards, 18, and two goaltenders. The downside of not including lop here in the opening night roster is that when he's called up, he'll count for $1.1 million against cap due to his uh, performance bonus not including his initial LTIR capture. After Oshi added to the LTIR and LaPierre up, they have $4.64 million space in LTIR. So uh, definitely the moves that would not have been able to take place if Oshi was here. Some of the moves would have been able to take place, but... Um, it's definitely, you know, TJ Oshie not playing 100% and Nick Backstrom uh, stepping away from hockey, being that that uh, hip resurfacing procedure uh, did not respond the way that he had hoped to put the Capitals in a unique situation and the ability to spend some money, make some trades, those kind of things that uh, ultimately is why the Capitals are in the position that they're in. Let's face it, PLD, Logan Thompson, Chikrin, Majiapane, Duhame, Radish, these kind of players on paper, definitely take this team to the next level. It's just a bit difficult to get cap compliant. That's why they have these guys that specialize in this and uh, ultimately how the Capitals were able to pull it off. At the end of the day, I don't care how they got it done. I'm just happy they were able to be cap compliant and be ready to start the season with guns ablazing. Listen, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank you for making it your first listen of the day. For your second listen, to find a Locked On Fantasy Hockey, become a fantasy hockey expert, and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. Find Locked On Fantasy Hockey on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.